Welcome to Good Libations, which is our show about mixology. And I'm Ethel Andrews, I'm a mixologist. And as you know, our aim is always to make truly innovative, creative drinks from fresh ingredients that have unique twists and nuances to them, but are accessible. And a growing concern these days uh, with many people, in fact, a growing number of people, is enjoying drinks that are good, but are not alcoholic. We know that there's health concerns related to this, legal concerns related to this, and many other issues. And that's what we're gonna do today because we have spoken about doing this on previous shows, uh, making drinks that are not alcoholic but truly good. And we also wanna aim to make drinks that are not kiddie drinks. And we know that you can get non-alcoholic drinks in many establishments. But unfortunately, they tend to be of the smoothie variety, a bit overly sweet and too fruit laden, or they tend to be of the ice cream based variety, which may be nice, but by the same token, a bit too sweet. It's not a drink that you could really enjoy before dinner. And it's also not a drink really that you can have to accompany your dinner. So what we're gonna do today is we're going to aim to make a non-alcoholic drink that has an adult finish and appearance to it and an adult flavor. Something that's not overly sweet and something that's not overly elaborate, but at the same time, something that an adult could enjoy as an accompaniment to their meal. And we're gonna use some interesting ingredients that could be used and are used, in fact, in alcoholic drinks. But again, we're gonna to aim to make this a non-alcoholic drink and what we're going to do, first of all, and this drink is gonna be made in a chimney glass, which I like because I think it has a nice appearance to it. And especially for drinks that are good in hot weather, summertime, and of course in Southern California, conceivably that could be any time of the year. But at any rate, with this particular drink, I'm going to use, first of all, some mint, some fresh mint that I'm gonna pull off here just a little bit, stems and all, and being that sometimes people don't have muddlers, I always strive to show that you can muddle drinks without having to resort to have a muddler. And we've used uh, to that effect before wooden spoons. Today we're gonna use perhaps a metal spoon or even a knife to show that you can muddle or bruise mint or basil or whatever and it'll have sort of the same effect as a professional muddler. But at any rate, for this particular drink, we're going to muddle our mint in a base of pineapple juice, and we're gonna put some other ingredients in it as well. Now, again, we're going to attempt to bruise the mint and muddle it up a bit with a knife. and a little bit with a metal spoon. And again, this is just to demonstrate that you don't necessarily have to use a muddler, although it is preferred for obvious reasons. And then we're gonna add some fresh lime to this drink. In fact, we're gonna add an entire fresh lime. And again, when you hand squeeze the limes like this, you're getting the oils out of the peel, as I always kind of lecture on when I make my drinks. Because again, that adds that infusion, the beautiful infusion of the oil so that you can really appreciate the citrus character that is supposed to be there. And after I squeeze the lime, I'm gonna add an orange or actually a quarter of an orange to this drink. And again, this is a nice non-alcoholic drink because it's a drink that is suitable for an adult to enjoy. And it's not overly sweet, it's pleasantly tart, and it has a hint of sweetness, but it's not cloyingly sweet, which is the thing that we want to avoid that is not a desirable thing in a drink that's gonna accompany a meal or that you're gonna have before a meal. So we're gonna squeeze in that quarter of an orange and again, you can change proportions if you wish. You could put more or less in, depending on what your palate in particular enjoys. 
And then at this point, we're going to add the ice. And as I've previously mentioned on the show, oh yes, you could use an ice bucket and not have to bend over. But if you're doing mixology, you're going to do plenty of bending over for the ice because an ice bucket perhaps will hold enough ice for a couple of drinks. So it's not pretty, but this is how it's done. And it always is nice to use ice that's made, we'll say, professionally, or if you have a nice bar refrigerator in your home, because the clarity of the ice is an important thing. Plus, you don't get any cloudiness, and you also don't get any off flavors or odd flavors. And another thing that you can add to this particular drink, which we might call a virgin pineapple mojito, is a hint of Rose's lime juice if you desire a bit more lime flavor or a bit sweeter flavor. And then to top it off, as you would with a regular mojito, you want to add a splash of sparkling water to kind of finish off the drink. And on our shows, we've always emphasized the importance of having a garnish. And again, it doesn't have to be an elaborate garnish. But there should be something to accent the drink and to provide an, a pretty appearance to it. And in this particular case, being that we used orange, we could use a bit of orange. And being that we used lime, again, we can use a bit of lime as our garnish. And again, it adds to the appearance of the drink, to the attractiveness of the drink. And when you squeeze a bit of it in too, you get just a little bit more infusion. And probably a good idea to stir a little bit because that way the flavors will blend nicely and marry nicely. And there you have, um, again, a drink that's suitable for the palate of an adult but does not contain alcohol. And again, for some people, this is very important. Maybe there's religious issues involved with their consumption, health issues, and also some people want to be very responsible and very careful in their drinking. And that is something, too, that I always like to emphasize as being important, is enjoying alcoholic beverages is a lot of fun and indeed is very enjoyable, but drinking responsibly is extremely important. Again, it's like if you threw a dinner party and you went to the trouble of preparing a lovely gourmet meal and people inhaled the food practically without tasting it. That is not a compliment to you as a chef. And it's not a compliment to a mixologist or a bartender if you just guzzle the drinks without savoring them and tasting them. And again, we want to make sure that when we make these drinks, that we go to the trouble of using fresh ingredients, fresh juices, fresh fruits, and avoiding mixes and cheaters, as you might call them. Now, sometimes if you're making non-alcoholic drinks, you might want to use some of those syrups like they use in uh, places that are espresso bars, and that's fine, but keep in mind that many of those syrups have high fructose corn syrup in them. And then uh, that, again, is not a good thing if you're concerned about health issues especially. But if you have to have a unique flavor, you may have to use one of those syrups in order to obtain that flavor in your drink. And again, this is not a drink where I have to tell you to drink responsibly and enjoy the drink. But again, this is something that you can enjoy as a substitute rather than having an alcoholic beverage. And thank you again for tuning in to another episode of Good Libations. I'm Ethel Andrews. I'm a mixologist. And on future episodes, we're going to talk about making some unique alcoholic drinks that have some different twists to them. Some of the drinks I've prepared before, but I've had a request to do them a little bit differently or to do them basically. So, Again, thank you for tuning in, and this is Ethel Andrews, and good libations. <music>